Another way that we can classify or distinguish between different kinds of polymers is in terms of their physical state or stereoregularity. And by this, I mean finer level details of how chemical groups are arranged around the polymer backbone. And there's three key uh, features uh, that I want to talk about. Tacticity, conformation, and configuration. Physical state of a polymer, as we've already seen, uh, depends on a number of things. It depends not only on the chemical makeup uh, of the polymer backbone, but also environmental conditions like temperature. Uh, so we talked about, for example, if uh, materials are thermoplastics or thermosets, uh, or if they're crystalline or amorphous. But there's also an important uh, parameter that we haven't talked about, and that's how these chemical groups are arranged uh, along the backbone of the polymer. And this is what we mean by stereoregularity. So when we think about a polymer chain, usually if we're talking about organic polymers, there's carbon along the backbone, and then we have other chemical groups that are extended off to the side. Uh, those can be hydrogen atoms or they can be other things. Uh, and so I'm going to show uh, a representative polymer here. So we have the carbon backbone, hydrogens, and then some other group that I'm gonna call R. So for polystyrene, for example, remember this was a carbon ring uh, type arrangement. Now, we didn't talk about how this carbon ring is distributed across the length of the polymer chain. We could imagine a regular distribution where this carbon ring or this side group uh, follows a predetermined pattern uh, in its arrangement along the polymer backbone. So here it's on the top. Then in the next repeat unit, it's on the bottom. Then on the next repeat unit, it's on the top. So it, it follows a regular pattern. But that doesn't always have to be the case. Uh, this side group could be arranged in a random fashion uh, throughout the polymer backbone. It could be on top here for the first two repeat units, then on the bottom, then on the top, then on the bottom. Uh, and this could uh, propagate uh, throughout the length of the polymer chain. So if we want to talk about whether we have a regular or an irregular distribution in a more precise way, uh, we use this term called tacticity. Uh, and this describes uh, more precisely uh, the arrangement of these chemical groups along the polymer backbone. If a polymer is isotactic, all of these side groups are said to be on the same side of the polymer backbone. So for example, here again, and I'm drawing this more realistically now because there's a carbon-carbon bond angle. Uh, you know, it's not like a, a, a long uh, straight chain like I've drawn in my previous drawings. Uh, and this side group then is always on the same side of the backbone, almost on the same location along the backbone. And again, if this is polystyrene, this R would be a carbon ring, but it could be a methyl group. It could be uh, many different things uh, as we'll see. Uh, but an isotactic polymer has all of these side groups positioned on the same side of the polymer backbone. Now, we already said that that doesn't have to be the case. Uh, we could imagine a situation where instead of being on the same side of the backbone, these side groups alternate from one side to the other. And if that's the case, it's still a regular arrangement in the sense that it repeats uh, in a well-defined uh, pattern, but this pattern is an alternating pattern. And so if this is the case, then this is said to be a syndiotactic arrangement. So again, in terms of regular arrangement of uh, side groups along the polymer backbone, an isotactic arrangement has them all in the same location. A syndiotactic arrangement has them in alternating locations along the polymer backbone. Okay, then we already said that these don't have to be uh, these chemical groups don't have to be arranged in a regular manner uh, along the polymer backbone. They can be randomly distributed. And if that's the case, then the material is said to be atactic, or the arrangement is said to be atactic. So we can imagine again uh, our polymer chain, and now these side groups are distributed uh, randomly along the backbone. They're on one side uh, for the first two repeat units, then they're on another side, then they're back on the other side, then they're down here for three. Uh, so this is said to be an atactic arrangement. So polystyrene, for example, uh, we can consider the case where the side group is a carbon ring. And we talked about the case already where we have an atactic arrangement. So even though I didn't tell you that, uh, we said that the presence of this bulky side group uh, on the polymer chain uh, prevents uh, it from 
uh, being arranged in a dense uh, a, a dense packing that would uh, be needed uh, to have a crystalline arrangement. So in general, polystyrene is an amorphous uh, material. Uh, it doesn't uh, show crystallinity. Uh, and it has a glass transition of around 100 degrees C. That means a transition where uh, it begins to soften and flow. But it is possible through specialized uh, chemistry to produce uh, a regular structure for polystyrene. And in particular, syndiotactic polystyrene can be synthesized. And by adopting that regular uh, or stereoregular uh, arrangement of the side groups, this material can actually exist in a crystalline state. So syndiotactic polystyrene can crystallize uh, and it has a melt transition then of around 270 degrees C. So again, this is a very specialized material. Uh, it requires specialized chemistry to uh, produce uh, the chains uh, with the side groups uh, arranged in this order. And this kind of foreshadows what we're going to be talking about later in the course is how different uh, polymerization reactions can control these properties because you begin to see that it's not just being able to make chains of a certain length, but being able to control finer levels of the details about how chemical groups are arranged uh, along the chain backbone that are important to determine the governing properties of the material that you're going to produce.